Hello everyone, I'm myself from Pradeepthi Karya and today we'll discuss about factors necessary for erythropoiesis. Before starting my class, I would like to inform you that you will get all my lecture notes in soft copy and hard copy. To get soft copy, you have to download the application test series and you have to get the course. And for hard copy, you can order my book that is Physiology Notes which is available on Flipkart as well as Amazon. Link for the Flipkart, link for the Amazon as well as link for my application, they all are given in the description box. Now let us start with today's topic that is factors necessary for erythropoiesis. These factors which are required for erythropoiesis, they are classified in three categories. Number one is general factors and they are erythropoietin, thyroxine, hemopoietin growth factor we will discuss in detail one by one and vitamins. Maturation factor number two, they are vitamin B12, folic acid and intrinsic factor and number three, they are uh, factors which are required for hemoglobin formation. We will discuss one by one. Starting with the general factor uh, that is first general factor that is erythropoietin which is also known as erythrocyte stimulating factor or erythropoiesis stimulating factor that is hormone which regulates the process of erythropoiesis. Okay, erythropoiesis and the hormone is erythropoietin. Okay, it regulates erythropoiesis and the structure of the hormone that is it is glycoprotein with molecular weight of about 34,000 and 165 amino acids. Okay, it is produced mainly by our kidneys, peritubular capillary epithelial cells of the kidney. 85% of erythropoietin is produced by peritubular capillary epithelial cells and 15% of it is produced by the liver cells. Okay, and in intrauterine life, major site for the synthesis of erythropoietin that is in liver. Now, what is the stimulus for secretion of erythropoietin? That is hypoxia, which decreases oxygen supply to the tissue, okay, or decrease in the number of RBC. When RBC number decreases or decreases oxygen supply, like after hemorrhage or in case of hemolytic anemia, hemolytic anemia, when RBC count decreases there is release of renal erythropoietic factor okay and uh, this renal erythropoietic factor acts on the plasma alpha globulin which is erythropoietinogen and converts it into erythropoietin so hypoxia stimulates specific uh, another another mechanism is hypoxia also stimulates specific globulin formation from liver okay and uh, hypoxia this is the reason at high altitude when there is hypoxia that results in increase in RBC production and there is polycythemia. Okay? And erythropoietin production it reaches peak within 24 hours after hypoxic stimulation. So when we are uh, ascending at higher altitude after 24 hours this erythropoietin production reaches to its peak. You can see here either hypoxia or hemolysis means either oxygen decreases because of any other reason high altitude or any other or there is decrease in the RBC that results in decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen that stimulates the secretion of erythropoietin okay now but if there is absence of erythropoietin that like suppose kidneys are failed or kidneys are removed and erythropoietin will not be secreted then what happens if there is hypoxia but if erythropoietin is absent, then there is no stimulation of RBC production. So this is absent in absence of erythropoietin. So you can say that erythropoietin is important to increase production of RBCs in response to hypoxia. Okay. Now, uh, what are the actions of erythropoietin? Erythropoietin, it acts by increasing erythropoiesis. It acts by acting at the site of erythropoiesis, like it acts on the yolk sac. As we have discussed in our last class, sites of erythropoiesis, uh, liver, spleen, and bone marrow. That depends on the age. As we have discussed in first two months of intrauterine life, yolk sac is the site. Then next trimester, liver and spleen, and later one, bone marrow is the site. Now. <coughs> So that is one uh, mechanism, it acts and it increases erythropoiesis, it acts on the site. Second thing, it also promotes every step of the maturation. 
every step of maturation of RBC. RBC maturation increases. Okay. Uh, now, so you can say actions. You can see here this is an enumeratic actions properly. One that is it increases differentiation of stem cells. Hmm? Stem cell differentiation increases. That is cause mechanical. Second, hemoglobin synthesis also increases by potentiating the action of delta amino levulinic acid levulinic acid synthetase that is required for the synthesis of hemoglobin also promote a free step of the maturation of RBC number 3 and after it gets matured this RBCs as well as reticulocytes they are released in the circulation so differentiation of stem cells hemoglobin synthesis all these types of maturation are stimulated and also stimulates the release of RBCs as well as reticulocyte okay now what are the factors they increase erythropoietin secretion hmm? so they are one that is degree of oxygenation and number of RBCs number of RBCs in the circulation they give negative feedback means number decreases erythropoietin secretion increases so it acts as feedback mechanism to increase or decrease secretion of erythropoietin okay now so we say that factors they increase erythropoietin production one that is hypoxia that is because of hemorrhage high altitude because of cardiorespiratory disturbances any any ways when there is hypoxia decrease oxygen supply to the tissue or hemoglobin is altered mass hemoglobin uh, is excess okay so they stimulate erythropoietin production certain vasoconstrictor agents also may produce hypoxia and increases erythropoietin secretion nucleotides like cyclic amp nicotinic adenine uh, adenine uh, dinucleotide nadp they also increase as well as production of products of RBC destruction like hemolysates. They also increase erythropoietin secretion. Certain hormones like thyroxine, testosterone, they also increase erythropoietin secretion. Whereas factors they decrease, uh, sorry here this is decrease, uh, typing mistake, decrease erythropoietin secretion that is estrogen, chronic renal failure, cirrhosis of liver, protein deficiency and chronic inflammatory diseases they decrease erythropoietin secretion now so let us discuss the effect of hormones like androgens testosterone, thyroxine, growth hormone prolactin, ACTH and adrenocortical steroids okay so this uh, hormones you can say that uh, hormones they increase erythropoietin secretion as we have discussed androgens they increase erythropoietin secretion Thyroxine as it is metabolic hormone, so it increases erythropoietin secretion, growth hormone also increases, prolactin, ACTH and adrenocortical steroid hormones, they also increase the erythropoietin secretion. Now, uh, hemolysates, uh, certain hemolysates, they also increase erythropoietin secretion. Uh, uh, nucleotides, as we have discussed here, we have already discussed. Just are cyclic AMP, NAD, NADPH also increase erythropoietin secretion and vasoconstrictor agents like uh, here this vasoconstrictor agent like sympathetic stimulation that also increases erythropoietin secretion okay now uh, another is factors that decrease erythropoietin secretion and they are adenosine antagonist like theophylline and estrogen they decrease erythropoietin secretion Just a minute. Now, we will discuss certain hemophotic growth factors. They are in interleukins and stem cells factor. They also increase erythropoietin secretion. Common interleukins, they are glycoproteins of cytokine family. Interleukin 3, 6 and 11, they play an important role. Uh, interleukin 3 secreted by T cells, 6 secreted by T cells, endothelial cells and macrophages. And 11 that is secreted by osteo sorry osteoblast okay now certain vitamins also they are necessary for erythropoiesis and def deficiency of this vitamins they result in anemia and they are general general vitamins we are talking about maturation vitamin that is with b12 and folic acid general vitamins are vitamin b c d and e now <coughs> special maturation factors they are our vitamin b12 and intrinsic factor B12 that is also known as cyanocobalamin and uh, that is also known as extrinsic factor because it binds with the intrinsic factor and that is required for the maturation of RBC. <coughs> Sorry, 
daily requirement of vitamin B12 that is very less 1 to 3 microgram and uh, its deficiency that causes pernicious anemia and therefore vitamin B12 is known as anti-pernicious factor. Now, role of vitamin B12, you can see here, for the synthesis of DNA and maturation of nucleus and cell, we require vitamin B12, you can see here, vitamin B12 is required, folate is there here, okay, but along with that, this vitamin B12 is also required for the certain steps, uh, this uh, adenosine methionine and as adenosine homocysteine and that is convert that gets converted when methyl transferase in presence of methyl transferase there is methylation here so this type it requires vitamin b12 and in deficiency of vitamin b12 rbc's they don't get mature so failure of maturation of rbc's and rbc's they are larger one immature cells are large so the anemia that is having the cells are large megaloblast okay Second is the intrinsic factor. This intrinsic factor also known as intrinsic factor of Kessel that is produced by parietal cells of gastric mucosa. And structure it is also glycoprotein with molecular weight of about 50,000 and uh, deficiency of intrinsic factor also produces pernicious anemia because intrinsic factor is required for the synthesis of, uh, for the absorption of vitamin B12. Okay. Uh, now, what are the causes for decrease in this of uh, intrinsic factor if there is gastritis? Yes, stomach mucosa gets inflamed or if there is ulcer in the stomach mucosa or carcinoma all this they result in decrease in the synthesis of intrinsic factor and how intrinsic factor acts you can see here one molecule of intrinsic factor this one it binds with the molecule of vitamin b12 you can see here and this intrinsic factor and vitamin b12 complex it passes it binds with this uh, it passes through the stomach and it is not a uh, digested vitamin b12 is not digested in the stomach in presence of intrinsic factor now this reaches to the ileum and where vitamin b12 is absorbed in the portal blood after splitting off from the intrinsic factor intrinsic factor will go back to the stomach for the action okay and this extrinsic and intrinsic factors that together they are known that is known as hematinic principle and it helps in the maturation of arms Next is folic acid. Folic acid that is uh, pteroyl glutamic acid and related compounds. They are folate. They play an important role again synthesis of DNA along with vitamin B12. This is more biochemistry. Cycle is there that uh, requires these two factors. Okay. So folic acid that is green leafy vegetables. It contains folic acid and this is also required for maturation the, of RBC. Daily requirement of folic acid is slightly high 100 to 300 microgram. Okay, and a deficiency produces megaloplastic anemia. Okay, now how the folic acid play an important role here? You can see in uh, plasma, folate appears as methyl tetrahydrofolate. You can see here tetrahydrofolate. Okay, uh, by a pathway for which vitamin B12 is required, this methyl cobalamin. Okay, and so B12 is also required, this tetrahydrofolate is also required. Okay, and this is required for you can see here at the here the step DNA synthesis okay so tetrahydrofolate uh, appears as methyl tetrahydrofolate which is changed into the tetrahydrofolate by a pathway for which vitamin B12 is required here you can see and without this active folate coenzymes are not formed so for the synthesis of DNA we require 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate and that is essential form okay from which dihydrofolate is formed you can see here again another pathway you can see here monoglutamate then methyl tetrahydrofolate tetrahydrofolate here methylated group gets transferred for that here vitamin b12 is required tetrahydrofolate that is converted to formyl tetrahydrofolate and this is converted to 510 methyl tetrahydrofolate okay uh, so here that is converted to dihydrofolate okay and again this dihydrofolate again is converted into formyl tetrahydrofolic okay and uh, this for that the enzyme required that is dihydroreductase and this is inhibited by the drug uh, methotrexate okay but here in short you remember that for this pathways you can see i will just show you this is very important this methyl cobalamine here you can see that is also uh, the form of vitamin b12 this is absorbed here in, in the liver this is in, uh, formed Folic acid, this is tetrahydrofolate. Both are required for the DNA uh, synthesis in the 
maturation of RBC. Okay, so these are your maturation factors. Next is factors required for the hemoglobin synthesis. They are first class proteins. This first class proteins they provide amino acids, and these amino acids are required for the synthesis of globin part because globin chain that is the chain of amino acid. Okay, iron is iron is also required for the synthesis of heme part. We will discuss heme consists of iron and four pyrrole rings. Okay, then. Uh, certain metals are required like copper is required for the absorption of iron okay in uh, ancient time people used copper utensils for uh, the storage of food as well as drinking water so that is uh, scientific also that is required for the absorption of iron cobalt and nickel they are essential for utilization of iron calcium is also required various vitamins like vitamin c riboflavin riboflavin or riboflavin nicotinic acid and pyridoxine they are required for the formation of hemoglobin bile salts are also required for the absorption and uh, uh, that they are also required uh, for absorption of iron and they are also required for the synthesis of hemoglobin okay so this is all about factors required for the erythropoiesis okay thank you so much if you wish to get all my notes in soft copy or download the application the saviors and get the course and for hard copy you can order my book that is physiology notes available on flipkart and amazon link for all my application my notes that is given in the description box okay thank you so much if you like my video you can like it you can share with all your friends and subscribe my channel thank you